Hello, guys. I will say it's much nicer standing in front of a crowd of people. No, I'm not, I'm not going to get my head punched in for the next 36 minutes. And with that, I'm Nathan Heaney, a professional boxer from Stoke on Trent. And over the last six and a half years of my career, I've remained undefeated in my last 19 contests. I am now the reigning and defending British and WBA Continental middleweight champion. As well as becoming one of the best middleweights in the country, I've also got myself ranked within the top 10 fighters in the world. But it's not within like this. And I stand here today to share a journey. A journey from the depths of despair to the peaks of triumph. A journey that traverses the rough terrain of failure, resilience, and ultimate victory. Today I share the story of how a loser became a winner. Picture this. A baby who's full of potential and opportunities. Yet this baby, before they've even been born, has had their path selected for them and they have no choice about it. That baby is me. Ordained on a solitary boxing glove beanbag. As I say, I had no choice in this matter. <laughs> but it's through good, it was only through good experience and merit that this happened. You see, my father, Joseph George Heaney, was the epitome of how boxing can help an individual. Boxing can improve confidence, self-esteem, fitness, and, and mental health issues. And my dad, as a young boy, had truancy issues, violence, and he had mental health issues that suffered with him all through his life. Yet, in his own words, when he joined the boxing gym at the age of 20 years old, boxing saved him. And he wanted that from his son from the day I was born. The only unfortunate thing, he just meant I was going to get punched for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's hard to convey a lifetime of boxing in seven minutes, so I'll keep it short, but I'll start from the beginning. 11 years old, in a workingman's club in Birmingham. And I'm walking to the ring like I'm walking to the park. I'm so naive. I've got a big smile on my face. I'm waving to my mum, and I don't realize that there's an 11-year-old killer in the opposing corner. Killer subjective, of course, but still a killer nonetheless, whose sole objective was to bludgeon me into submission. And bludgeon me he did, but not into submission. That's one quality that I've always had from a young age, resilience. And that's my first takeaway from today. My story isn't that of blessed genetics, fortune, or some divine intervention. Far from it. I'm an average person, but I've always had an above average will to succeed. The great Mike Tyson had a quote, everybody's got a, pu everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. So I ask you this, when, you get, when life punches you in the face, and it will, how will you find the resilience and the resolve to keep progressing? After my first loss, there was no linear progression for me. From the age of 11 to 17 years old, I was a bona fide loser, always losing more fights than I won until my 50th contest. 50 fights later and years gone by until I finally had the opportunity to make things all even. And I did. In a workingman's club, the Golden Hill Workingman's Club in Kidsgrove, I made it 25 wins and 25 losses. I finally wasn't a loser. Could boxing finally be something that I wanted to do? And not something that was forced upon me. It was. It became my passion. And my goal then, bit delusional of course, was to fight for my country. And obviously that goes into my next point. When it comes to obviously all the talents in the world, which I didn't really have, in order to foster all the qualities you need, you need the right environment in order for them to flourish. And for me, the environment was the Rotunda Amateur Boxing Club in Liverpool. And as a young 19-year-old lad, I used to drive 120 miles a day just so I could box at one of the best clubs in the country. I was, daily, I was mixing with Callum Smith, Rocky Fielding, Liam Smith, fighters that would go on to become world champions in professional boxing years later and be household names in the world of boxing. And I was mixing with them every day. Rotunda ABC, the home of champions. Around that time, about 12 months later, I also got a placement at the Sport Development and Coaching Qualification degree at Staffordshire University. So the commute sort of had to take a bit of a back seat. And I brought all the skills that I gained at the Rotunda, which my boxing had matured more than ever at that point, and brought it back to Stoke. It's around this time when I come back to Stoke that the Staffordshire boxing team were putting together a squad to go over to Denmark in an international tournament. And I was selected. And I went over with a team of 10 boxers, and I was representing my weight class. I won my semi-final by a landslide. In the final, I was fighting the number two Danish fighter called Mohamed Adal. And I won that in probably the best performance I've ever done as an amateur. I then come home. And on the back page of the Sentinel, I had this, the Viking, ra the Viking raid. 
it was, it was, it was a nice thing to have. It's, as I say, as someone who didn't do great at, at the start, it was coming along. And obviously, and one thing I didn't mention, at this tournament, they actually had a trophy for the best boxer of the tournament. And there was actually 220 boxers that attended. Yet, for some reason, they actually awarded that trophy to me. So I felt like I was getting there. And the dream to fight for England was still there. And then, a year later, an assessment squad at the Institute of Sport in Sheffield, the home of GB Olympic boxing. Many boxers turned up to this event. It was to assess your skills, see what you're going to do. Can you get into the England squad? And the coaches told me, and all of us, there were two spots available in each weight class. This is it. This is my time. The fitness test, I was number one. The sparring, I was great. When I left Sheffield, I thought to myself, this is it. It's going to happen. And I went back to Stoke, and two weeks later, I received an email from England Boxing. And I opened it excitedly, only to be very disappointed. In the email was basically the, a, a tick boxing, copy and paste feedback that wasn't even really applicable to me. My heart was broken. And it was at this moment that I thought to myself, I don't think I'm ever going to box for my country, no matter how hard I try. And it was around this time, though, that a new path opened up to me. In my second year at Stafford University, Jill Moss, a great Irish woman and a manager at Stafford College, said this to me, do well in your final year, and I promise you, I will give you a funded placement on your postgraduate certificate in education, and I will also give you a job at the college. That's it. I didn't need boxing anymore. And with that, it was right towards the end when my bo the wick in my boxing candle had almost burnt out. And I hung the gloves off, never to box again. Realities change, responsibilities change, and unfortunately, dreams can die. And my dream died right at that time. Then 12 months into my teaching, something magical happened, and my students inspired me. I mean, really inspired me. Never before have I wanted to smash people's faces in like I did that year. And so I picked the gloves back up. <laughs> the reality of it was this, though. I was 27 years old, and there was something in the back of my mind that was saying, if you don't turn professional, you might regret this for the rest of your life. Now, to set the scene, if you're not signed by a TV promoter, you're signed by what's known as a small hall promoter. A local promoter who hasn't got much of a budget, you'll fight in your local town halls, leisure centers, or any venue that they can afford. And my debut was in Bilston Walsall in a freezing cold food hall. 60 people went down to support me. It was a great night. I remember walking out. They didn't put the heat on, it was freezing, freezing. The, the polystyrene tiles on the roof, some were brown, some were falling through. Was this professional boxing? I didn't care. I was just there for the journey. I won my debut. I then won my second, my third, my fourth, my fifth, my sixth fight. And then in my seventh fight, I finally had the opportunity to fight for my first ever professional title. And it was in the toughest fight of my life to date. And probably the toughest part of my life as well. Against Tom Stokes for the Midlands area title. A tough lad from West Brom who nine weeks prior to our fight had just beaten one of Ricky Hatton's prospects. He was on fire. The fight was phenomenal. 330 people in the King's Hall in Stoke. I hurt him in the first round. He hurt me in the second round. I hurt him in the third round. He hurt me in the fourth round. I sit down at the end of round four, and my coach and best friend, Steve Woodvine, said, Nathan, you're not, I won't swear, you're not doing a single thing that I'm telling you. Use your feet, use your combinations, and make it easy. Unfortunately, I listened to him, and I won the remainder of the rounds and won the, the middleweight title. But the 330 people that were there that night weren't supporting me as Nathan Heaney, the boxer. They were also supporting me as Nathan Heaney, the person. Because I mentioned it was my toughest fight so far. But it's also the toughest moment in my life. Because eight weeks and one day prior to that fight, I unfortunately went to my dad's home to finally take in his own life. Now, when I'm talking about resilience previously, I'm not doing a do as I say, not as I do. I've been there. I've done it. I know what it's like. Listen, you can be emotional. There's nothing wrong with that. Listen, if you put E.T. on the TV screen and he phones home, I'm blubbling my eyes out. But to be weak and allow the tragedy of life to take over, I promise you now, if I had not won that fight that night and not gone through with it, I would not be standing on the stage right now and I would not be on the big lights of TNT Sports. I'll go back. 
And then when my eighth, my ninth, and my tenth fight come up, what, in March 2020, one week before the first ever lockdown at the King's Hall, this is what I envisioned. There were 330 people there at the, at the Middle and South fight, but this one sold out 1,200 people in attendance. There might have been more, but I won't say that because of regulations. But, <laughs> but it was packed out, stoke banners all over the banisters. Everyone's, I'm walking out to Delilah, why, why, why? Delilah, the old place going electric, and I won the fight. It was great. I was the IBO Consensus Champion. But what was great for that night, there was a stage just like this at the King's Hall. And there was a man with his phone just recording it. And the next day he shared it on Twitter. He had no followers, not many at all. But for some reason, that video caught fire. Thousands of shares later, millions of views later, people loved it. The epitome of small hall boxing. From nothing, a homegrown small hall fighter to that. Then four weeks later, in my lockdown kitchen, I did something that I thought that would never happen. And I signed my first ever contract with Hall of Fame promoter, Frank Warren. That's something I'd always dreamt of doing. I wanted to fight for England first, but that was obviously a prerequisite to fight for Frank. But I'd done it. And from that moment on, fights 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, were all on TV. And Stoke were in the bright lights, literally, not figuratively. They were there. We were there taking over everywhere. Telford, Manchester, Birmingham. And then in my 18th fight, I got a phone call from George Warren, the son of Frank Warren, and the CEO of Queensby Promotions. All right, George? Yeah, Nate, you okay? Yeah, I'm going to make everything okay. Yeah, you're fighting Denzel Bentley. I'm fighting Denzel Bentley. You're fighting Denzel Bentley. What, for the British title? Yeah, for the British title. You've got to take this opportunity it's not going to come around again. You've got to take it. I've got to just give you some context to Denzel Bentley. Denzel Bentley was one of the hardest hitting middleweights in British boxing. Knocked out 85% of his opponents. A two-time British champion and a former world title challenger. The bookies in some places had me at 18 to 1. Bet 365 I'd be at 9 to 1. <laughs> what are they doing? No one gave me a chance. The only people that believed were myself, Steve, Woodvine, and a handful of other people. But I knew something they didn't. Steve Woodvine had a plan. And when I said to before, I never listened to him. In this fight, I executed it to absolute perfection. And 2,000 Stokies guided me through that fight. Steve guided me every single round on the stool. And after 12 hard-fought rounds, I had this moment. So content. We were on the big stage and we did it. And as I said, almost made me emotional like watching that. I became a loser. From a loser where I was as an amateur to there, I became a winner. And now, and that crazy dream came true. And now, my dream, my last dream, is to fight to my football club's Stoke City's stadium and create a once in a lifetime event for my city of Stoke content. And it seems totally unbelievable to say that. But where I am today is totally unbelievable. But I always believed and I knew what it, how it, what it took to get here. I understood that victory lay not in the absence of failure, but in the refusal to be defined by it. And so we'll leave, it, leave you with this. The story of a loser, how a loser became a winner, is not one of extraordinary circumstances or innate talents. It's a story of grit, resilience, and unwavering self-belief that is in each and every single one of us. As you leave this hall tonight, I want you to reflect on your journey. What obstacles stand in your way and what doubts linger in the recess of your mind? The journey 
from winners to losers is not reserved for the few. It's open to anybody who dares to tread upon it. So go forth, embrace your failures, harness your resilience, and believe, truly believe, the, num- the victory, no matter the end destination, is, with, is, with, is within your grasp. And remember, we're all losers in here. Because if you're not losing, you're not even trying. Thank you. Yeah.